one which I, who have spent so much of my life in the military profession, would have preferred never to use. That new language is the language of atomic warfare. The atomic age has moved forward at such a pace that every citizen of the world should have some comprehension, at least in comparative terms, of the extent of this development, of the utmost significance to every one of us. Clearly, if the peoples of the world are to conduct an intelligent search for peace, they must be armed with the significant facts of today's existence. to go before the first blast, mic shot, of Operation Iron. Uh, 59 minutes now to be exact. We've been here since daybreak. Left we talk last night during the early morning hours. Now as you can imagine, feeling is running pretty high about now, and there's reason for it. If everything goes according to plan, we'll soon see the largest explosion ever set off on the face of the Earth. That is, the largest that we know of. In the time between our HR, I'd like to show you around, if I may, and introduce you to some of the people connected with this operation. And in general, piece together the events which have brought us to this point. To start off, I'd like to show you something over here. You realize there are many miles of ocean between us and any Weetok Atoll. To know what's going on back at the Atoll, these antennas are receiving televised signals and are giving our men here a second-by-second -second account of what's happening on Chart Island. The television receivers are in here, in the control room. Well, this is it. This is the control room. I'd like to have you meet Mr. Stan Burris, the commander of the scientific task group. Oh, Stan, I wonder if you could tell us something about the operations that go on in this room. Sure, I'd be glad to. Uh, the screens you see in front of you enable us to monitor the uh, timing of firing system. If you will look close, you will see that it is now 55 minutes before each hour. As time clicks off, more and more lights come into operation. This is the one minute light, 30 seconds, 15, 5, 1, uh, through firing. This diagram will give you a general idea of the whole setup. Data from the sequence timer is piped over to a display panel. 
This kind of display panel is new to atomic test work because of the large number of remote control and metering problems encountered in this operation. For one thing, the master timing and metering apparatus is located next door to the shot cab rather than being placed some 20 miles away on Parry Island as is usually done. This close view is possible, of course, because the lens of a television camera, rather than human eyes, is watching events. So that's the flow. From timer on through to display panel, picked up by a television camera and relayed on out to the estates. A very ingenious arrangement. But what happens if you have to stop the firing mechanism, or can you stop it? Well, we can stop it all right if we have to. We have a radio link direct to the firing panel and the shot cap. If we have to stop the shot, we simply push this button. Just a simple flip of the wrist, huh? That's right. But a lot of work goes down the drain. You understand we don't want to stop this thing unless it's absolutely essential. No, I can understand that. Say, I was out on deck when you fellas returned. Well, that is when the firing party returned. <laughs> uh, what happened out there on Shot Island? If you'll excuse me, I suggest you talk to Colonel Lunger about that. I have a timing signal coming up. All right. So then, Dick, the firing party's big job is to see the last-minute details of arming and firing and to make sure that the Shot Island is secure. That's the broad brush of it, yes. I've been a member of firing parties before, but this was different somehow. A man standing, as I stood, on the outside of the building housing the mic device couldn't help but feel, to sense the importance of this moment. Inside, a handful of men were making a final check, were arming a device which could be the key to a new era in atomic weaponry. I don't know just how the others felt, but I felt small when I thought of the experiment being readied inside. This one test could take us out of the realm of kilotons into the fantastic world of megatons. And then, at H minus six hours, the job was finished. The mic device was on its own and ready. We made the run from Shot Island down to the anchorage of the Estes off Perry in a fast crash. Soon after, the Estes made way through the deep entrance between Perry and Japtan Islands, out to a point 10 miles southeast of Perry, the rendezvous area of the task force ships. We finished our job at the cab, came over the side, and here we are. Not long ago at Los Alamos, I was talking to Dr. Alvin C. Graves, head of the test division there. He's on board now in flag plot as the scientific deputy to the task force commander. He's one of the men who can tell us about the thinking behind this operation. The shot island is about over in there? That's right. It's generally north and west of us. For the past half hour, the ship has been headed directly toward the shot island and will continue to do so until shot time. You know, there's one thing I can't quite put together. That's this business of success or failure. I've heard there's a 50% chance of its failing. Now, this low margin of success wasn't true on the other shots, was it? No, it wasn't. Let me try out the Admiral's chair. Sure.